Now, what springs to mind when you think of a young artist? Inevitably, images of a person struggling to financially survive as she or he attempts to create works of art. Born in France and now living in London, Marine Tongui first entered the art world when she was just 21 years old, but she didn't like the inequality she witnessed. As a result, she went on to establish the MT Art Agency, aimed at disrupting the art sphere by creating innovative ways of income for artists. And this year, she was named by Forbes magazine on their list of 30 under 30 most influential people in the art world. And she joins me today. Marine, thank you so much for coming in. As I just said, you were just 21 when you first entered the uh, art world. What did you find that you so disliked? So I think I came at it with a lot of naivety. Like I loved art, so of course I was going to work in that industry. Um, and quickly what kind of I realised as a gallery director is that you only encountered artists who could afford to be artists. You only encountered art professionals who were coming from a certain type of background. And that really bothered me because the reason I loved art is because of its universality, the fact that as a language, you can just share it so easily. Um, so yeah, it really did bother me when I started. And part of the problem, isn't it, in the art world, is money is where the power is yeah. at. And the reality is that most art collectors and curators are predominantly men. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, I guess it's a conservative industry, and if you look at any kind of conservative sectors, the money will still be very much masculine in that sense. Um, it has many implications because, again, you're talking about a language that your kids are learning from. So you're going to museums and you're learning about your history, but actually you're learning about the history from a type of people. And that is, again, because it's still controlled by that financial aspect. So you need the diversity of finance so that you have a diversity of the visual itself because you will only ever see the art that's been commissioned and that requires that financial transaction. So what is so different about your agency? Hopefully everything. Um, so I guess there's a few things. Once you can apply to us, we have 200 artists that apply to us monthly. You now have a fair selection system. It's not Marines Grante, it's a selection committee that therefore establishes why um, they will select you or not. Um, we also look generally to build reputation across all sectors because we understand that you will need different types of partnerships to be building up your names. And contacts is one thing that you may not have if you don't come from a certain background. We also find finance with studio costs monthly, um, which is very important to me because it's also a way to say, doesn't matter where you are, um, if you're talented, we'll be behind you. Um, so I hope we have a very human approach, that if you are a really inspiring human, you should have the resources behind you that helps you getting there. And as a result, are you promoting many more young female artists? So that's the interesting thing is that I got told you should only have women artists. And I was like, no, because I just want my women artists to be known as the best artists. I do want them to be known as the best female artists. That kind of defeat the point for me. And by not looking at gender, by not looking at skin colours, we actually have 50-50 in terms of the artist group. And I would never, ever take on someone just because I want to tick a box. I'm generally incredibly excited that every single person that's coming through our group is very talented. So I think, again, by not hopefully being biased, do you end up showing that the numbers organically uh, make sense to be in 50-50? Um, so that's exciting. I think there is always more work to do on empowering women because they do come, sadly, still with less confidence than some of my male artists. Um, now, Adelaide that just appeared actually is doing better than her male counterparts and I think that is showing that as we speak now we have successes that as women they are starting doing a lot better. Is the art world changing as a result? I mean, you need another 40 years, but um, this is why I started early. Um, is it art world changing? Yes, because thanks to tech, um, you have more access into it. People can now hear about it, they can enter it more easily and at a, a smaller cost. Uh, so I think, yes, I will be changing it. Now, um, do I want a lot more? Of course I do, I want a lot more. I want everyone to feel this is their world, not just a type of people, and I want all type of artists to be able to inspire a lot more people through that industry as well. Now you have an incredible social media presence and one of the things you've talked about publicly is how social media has made a monster, if you like, of certain people, people yeah. like Kim Kardashian. Yeah. So what can social media do in order to promote young artists? 
So let me just give you a fact that scares me every time I think about it, is that Kim Kardashian has 190 million followers and Le Louvre Museum has 1 million. That's in terms of disparities. Um, so that's what I want to change. I want to raise influence towards people who talk about things that are meaningful. So my artist talks about gender issues, sustainability, cultural integration. They need a stronger influence for people to listen to that. Um, sadly, the current social media channels, your top five, are definitely not your perfect model in terms of social or meaningful sense. I hope we change it. Um, I don't want young girls to feel pressurized anymore to just look sexy. I would like them to feel pressurized to achieve things and talk about about things that are meaningful than just looking sexy. But it's, again, a long road. Marine, it's been great speaking to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much.